Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. I have been insanely busy recently, and you'll see that because you'll see that I've not been making quite as many videos as I used to in the past. I'd always try to go for a Saturday, Sunday, and a Wednesday. So in the combination of being busy in my personal life and starting some sort of longer more difficult fussy projects has really caned me so I thought it'd be nice to spend a few minutes that I have today just to sort of have a look at some old school things so this is a prestigio multi-pad 7 tablet and it's been sitting on my desk for ages to do it's basically been destroyed so the screen is is gone on it um, it doesn't have uh, an HDMI output so it can't really be retasked as a general Androidy thing and to be honest, it was really slow even when uh, it was working. It was it's sort of like the worst of the kind of bloatware. And I don't even know what Prestigio is, if it's uh, a Maplin or Tesco's or something brand. So I thought it'd be nice to just open it and salvage it. So what was wrong with it, by the way, was the screen is broken. And although you can't see it visually, it uh, when you powered it up, you got like a, a kind of a crack across the middle appearing. So it's somehow broken in you know among its layers. But these things normally have some good salvageable parts like fairly juicy battery and uh, in the past um, sometimes these batteries have been dead but I know this one's definitely not dead because of the battery so I'll definitely be having that. So let's unplug that first and see if we can extricate it from this uh, tablet. So if we were going to fix a tablet for example you'd have to go through a similar process and the problem is normally they're glued down. I'm just going to pop this speaker if I can. There we go, pop the speaker so we don't damage the wild. And I'll turn my soldering iron on in the corner too, so we can use that as necessary. Now the problem with the batteries is they're normally glued down, so and you don't want to burst them. You can start a fire or something. So I think you've got to be very cautious. I'm just using the spludger and I'm pointing it. I'm, I'm kind of dragging it across the back of the screen so it's not putting force on that. Um, because the last thing you want to do is slice into that battery like a you know like a knife. That's coming though. This is going pretty well actually. The old, oh, it's slightly slightly bent there. Wouldn't want it. To, don't bend it. But what really gets you is sometimes they put a piece of glue right in the middle, which I think they've probably done here. That you can see that now getting wedged in. If I put it on its edge, there's a good chance we can start seeing that. Yeah. So I've seen, oops, <laughs> screen's coming with it. I've seen some techniques where people basically put like a kind of a, a bit of cheese wire or something like that in there. I mean, I don't know. Let's have a look. I've got I've got some reasonably thick gauge wire and some thin gauge wires. Let's try that with some wires. It's like we're learning together. You could, I'm, I'm going to call the, the technique Ray Mearsing it. I'm going to have a go at Ray Mearsing it. And if you're in the, in the UK, you'll know why I'm calling it that. Yeah, seems to be kind of working to be honest with you. Let's try it again. So I'm just pushing the wire through and just using the wire to try to slice the the glue. Wow, and it's it's, it's kind of sticky. I mean, it really has uh, etched itself into that glue. Oh, crikey, Cri crikey O'Reilly. And just looking in there, yeah. It's, it's basically a foam pad, a bit like the old ones you get on um, your dash cams, just a sort of slightly lower grade of the pad. Urgh. And there's sharp stuff here. I'm cutting myself. I'm cutting myself. So I must be about halfway through now. So I probably wouldn't advise you to do this at home. Mm, yeah. Well, actually, I would. Just be careful. Wear gloves if there's a problem with your fingers getting cut up. So let's zoom back out again. Have a little look see, Lou. So there's the battery and it's it's looking pretty good. So I'm hoping that will be salvageable and rechargeable because it's a good old size really for projects. And I, I do have a little stash of batteries and we're going to be doing a series on uh, just charging these up and testing them. Because I did find in my box of magic a whole bunch of USB power bank circuits that I bought for no particular reason. But they are there and we can use them. So let's take this old speaker out. So speaker is uh, definitely something that you can use in projects. I mean, that's a nice little speaker there. 
what else? Anything else? I mean, technically, this lot is working. This is the whole, you know, Android system. And it's an all winner A13. That's the main processor. So we could do that. I mean, this is okay. So something we don't cover a lot of. But you might start to see in my uh, Jammer Supercon video thing where we're trying to have a fix of Ashen's WrestleFest is that I did start to lift some components and there are actually useful components on these boards that, you know, I often bin them, but really we could lift them and use them. Um, and one of them is this flash chip here and it's going to be, I do forget if it's a NOR or a NAND flash, but either way it is a flash chip and that's that one there. And they're quite fun because you can sometimes pop them in. If you've got an old pen drive that doesn't work or does work or whatever, you know, you just want to swap something in, you can. You've got here a bunch of little inductors that you can easily lift. You do have some surface mount capacitors and resistors, but they're going to be a little less useful because you, it's going to be tricky for you to figure out what values they are. Um, and in this case, of course, you have the screen, which is kind of we know is useless. And look at that little tack switch. So they're all sometimes, sometimes you sort of pull apart another tablet that's broken and it'll have the similar things that are gone. Oh, and my personal favorite, by the way, is the antenna here for the Wi-Fi. Oh no, did I just break that? Oh, it's it's weird, it's actually on a foam. It's really thin, it's a film antenna, I've never seen that. Wow, that's cool, so that's an interesting thing. It's actually a film antenna, so it's printed onto the usual um, flexi type material. I'm not gonna say it's quite the usual one because it's gonna be a low quality, but look, it's just printed on a thin, thin thing and then blopped onto a piece of foam. But that's nice. I mean, it's already like a pre-made antenna. So if you're doing anything with one of the ESP modules that doesn't have the antenna as part of the module, which they do exist, you can have that there. And look at this, it's, it's been quite tenacious now. I'm gonna have to start turning my soldering iron up for disastrous work. Um, there's a nice little module there and we're gonna have a look at that. There's a Realtek, probably Bluetooth module. Well, no, it's gonna be the Wi-Fi module, am I? I'm, I'm talking out of my Aris. It's going to be the Wi-Fi module, um, and that's because, of course, it's connected straight to where the uh, antenna is. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So there's the module, and there's its output, and there it's going to the Wi-Fi, and there's some tuning, uh, some footprints here for tuning uh, capacitors and whatnot. And let's see if we can read, read off what it is. And I have a gadget, actually. It's a gadget that we'll be showing in a future video. And there'll be a whole unboxing. I'm, I'm literally unboxing it off camera right now. And it was um, lent to me by uh, our good friend of the back office, Mr. Jared Ribo. And let's see if it works. It sort of works. It's a, uh, yeah. It is basically like a magic magnifying thing does it have it has some sort of lights on it does it have lights are on and um the idea of this oh i can read i can read it when i look at the screen i can see it but i know when you're looking at the screen you're getting a, a moire pan but yeah it does say it's a real tech rtl 811 8188 rather rtl 8188 etv so that's kind of groovy. So there you get a hint. You got a little hint of seeing something awesome there, but we'll cover that in another video because gosh, quite frankly, I need the material these days, don't I? I'm so so busy not doing videos for you. Um, so I think that module's worth salvaging. So we'll pop that little little guy off um, and we'll try to get the, in fact, let's, um, I'm gonna switch to hot air. Say so I'm trying to do this in a hurry, I'm setting, I've set myself a task to try to make this video no longer than 10 minutes. I'm already failing on that. But I want to see if we can lift this module. And I was gonna use hot air, oh no, I've already put a blob of solder on, on the component. <laughs> okay, Andrew, calm down, let's not rush. Dag, nam it, there we go. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to Resolder the pad, and the main reason being that I am using a leaded solder, 
and that's an unleaded solder normally they'll be using on the board so I'm just trying to mix mix and make a new alloy so it will flow a bit better and then I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on this corner of the board so I can try to lift it when I heat these two come on oh, crikey that's that's tough mm -mm -mm -mm. ah dare I dare I use this I have a brand new blade by the way on my favorite scalpel wow that board looks like it's stuck down this might not come how we want it why would you stick that down dang damn it the problem is with something like that now if you're actually trying to really trying to save this board and use it in the project um, you're gonna have to be really careful because even if you used hot air on that if it's stuck down with adhesive you're gonna point it you know what I mean it's gonna spring when you try to get that off so what we're gonna do by well, this is annoying me this is the uh, ribbon cable Oh, I don't know. I was going to say this is the ribbon cable for the screen, but it's probably the ribbon cable for the touch screen. It doesn't matter though. Either way, we're not using it. Shook. There you go. Touch screen controller. Um, in the bin it goes directly. I'm not interested in that at all. Touch screen controllers are two a penny, by the way. Just go on Alibaba and just give them a penny, and they will literally send you two. Right. Come on now. Get off me board. He's going. Good. Now we're going to work the other side. Quality repair. We've only lost a pad. One single pad from something has disappeared. Woohoo! Nice. I'm going to unbend. Ow, ow, ow. Unbend it. Got a little bit bent. Ah, oh, but it's, t it's, 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 woohoo! Look, it's USB. It's USB. It's got ground, D minus, D plus, antenna, and probably another ground. Wow. Wow, boys and girls. That's fun for us, isn't it? That means we can try wiring that up to something like this. Yee-hoo. Yee-hoo. Grovy. Grovy, baby. Okay, that's a, a video for a future day, but not today. Not today. We're already over our 10 minutes big time. Right, last thing. Oh, no. That was my that was my sort of warning now. That's my five minute warning. Right, hot air. Let's get this memory chip off. Also a useful thing could be this uh, micro SD card reader. Oh, out of flux. Let's do this. Right, I'm going in. Come on. There she goes. So it's a bit, uh, it's a bit gummy, a bit dirty. But I think it'd be, it'd be, oh no, it doesn't want to clean. Better get me flux cleaner. It's weird when you're doing something against, you know, the clock. Even though it's a sort of self-imposed time limit, and I'm already crazy over, um, it just makes it more, you know, frantic. So boys and girls playing along at home. The reason I'm cleaning it up, of course, is so that we can read it and see if we can use that in a suitable, suitably knackered pen drive, because you need the pen drive to be kind of working. 
Uh, it's a Tosh, a Tosh Eba. It's a Mishmosh Tosh Eba. SW7002. A Tosh Eba. 7002. And let's try our new uh, little gadget as well. Welcome. Welcome to the gadget. Uh, yeah. It's what's going on here it's it's kind of like there we go i'm going to i'm going to put this here more this there's too many cameras involved here but yes look a toshiba sw700 taiwan uh, 13339ae and there's the longer number if that's of any use this gadget's quite cool but i think we can improve upon it hmm, no predator vision though it's a shame. Anyway, hope that's been of some use to you. The use being, of course, how to remove the uh, Wi-Fi module, which is cool. We can make a USB gadget out of it. And also how to remove the flash chip, which, of course, will be interesting to see if we can transplant that into a pen drive and it works. Hopefully, I have some donor pen drives, but knowing me, I don't know, I tend to lose them pretty quickly. As ever, thanks for watching. Sinclair Spectrum Jigsaw.